hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Ladies and Gents Listen Up. And man, oh man, I know you're going to want to stay to the end. We, Our topic today, we're going to talk about six habits that increase your odds of divorce. So you're going to want to stay to the end to get all six. And we got some more extras to throw in there too. But before we get started, how are you today, Mr. Carpenter? I am doing well, Dr. Liz. How are you? I am doing well. I am doing really good today. I feel good. I'm excited about getting this information out today. Awesome. Well, all righty. You all know we go over to, oh, no, women, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this information with somebody else. So let's go on over to Grandma's Cookie Jar and see what Grandma's Cookie Jar is going to rustle up for us today, right? Grandma's Cookie Jar says, and I haven't read these today, so I'm going to just pull them out, and they're going to surprise me, too. The first one says, hmm, enjoy all you can. I <laughs> didn't stuff the jar. I am showing my evidence. <laughs> and on the back, it says, always find reason to laugh. Ooh, this is good for today because... Always find a reason to laugh because laughter is medicine, right? So when you're in that good mood, you're your 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 positive, uh, what is it? Uh, I want to say it's not toxins that's running through your body, but like everything is just flowing, and it's like like a almost like a summer day, especially with us getting out of the winter here in Michigan. It's time for some some breeze of some warm summer. So we're talking about six habits that increase odds of divorce. So we can also flip that around. And if we know what increases the odds of divorce, then we just don't do those things, right? Yes. <laughs> stop it. It's <laughs> good. Just stop. <laughs> I love that. Um, I want to kick it off with, uh, with with number one that I have on my list, which I think mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of sums everything up, I believe. Um, it's, it's being uh, selfish. Right. Okay. So when okay. we just when we just think about ourselves and you know what's in it for me, what's in it for me, and not considering the other person, that's a good that's that's a good um, you know a good way to accelerate uh, mm -hmm. a divorce. So yeah, so being selfish, just thinking about yourself. What about you? What do you think? I, I uh, with yours, I think that is a great one because normally when you go into any relationship, you first think about yourself. You think about you know what what attracts you to that person. You know you what is what are the enjoyment? What are you going to get out of the relationship? So those are the first things you get. But the deal is when you get together and you begin to blend, you have to then turn that self and just into a partner because now you become one flesh. So when that happens, you have to realize you have to invite uh, invite the other person into that into that mix to make the two of you guys. So you're proper, you're right there. But right. also, when you say selfishness, you're also adding other things like not wanting to do the not wanting to participate in the housework or the chores or the things that make the marriage go well. So when you hit selfish, that's a big one. That's Absolutely. a big. One. Now, my first one is infidelity and uh, cheating. That's the first one because that's the big that's the big norm. Normally, when you talk to someone, why did you get a divorce? He or she cheated. Right. So it's my number one. Okay, I think that's a great number one, right? Because once you break the trust in a relationship, this very, you know, I mean, some people can go through therapy or whatever it takes to mm -hmm. pull that back together. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's a challenge to to, uh, to overcome infidelity because that trust is broken, right? Yes, yes, yeah. because with, when you don't have trust, what do you have? Right, right. Unless both parties are absolutely willing to work through all of those issues, then I've, I've seen some successful couples, they get beyond it, but that's a hard one right there. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, when you do, do you, even though you come back to that level of trust and you guys are solid again, but in your back of your mind, are you really where you were before? Are you are you a, you're a little closer? But are you really where you were at first? Right. That's a that's a good question. I would love to hear some feedback on that one. Are you really? Or maybe maybe from what I've heard in in some instances, if the person is really able to forgive, like really able to forgive, and just then they go on to do something better, you know. Yes. But it, but there's yes. a lot of there's a lot of factors in yes. that one though. That's that's a yes. biggie. All right, so okay. I guess it's in my court. Deciding okay. deciding to love. 
Okay. okay. That's so, I've got one similar, but that's like my number. That's my like my number seven or eight or nine thing. Are you talking about when you say it's uh, loving? Are you talking about loving from the heart as loving you, my partner? Are you talking about the romance of of loving you? Are you talking about the things that go along with loving you, the behavior that support loving you? When you when you say loving, it's a it's a big it's a big thing. It is a big thing, but the thing of it is the feeling. All that you described is loving, right? Deciding mm -hmm. to love somebody versus mm -hmm. the the feeling. You know, we first meet somebody, and you know, if it's if it's a lot of chemistry there, the, the you know things fly through the air, and you know you get all these all this a rush of um rush adrenaline. of endorphins and adrenaline adrenaline. and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. However, the the test is when you continue to build that relationship with that person and then sometimes you just don't like them, but do you still love them when that feeling is no longer there? So you're deciding to love them, right? Yes, so that's what it yes. means. Deciding to continue to love them and even to even to fight fair, you know? And sometimes when you're close with somebody, you know all of their, you know, their little everything, you know, the little nuances mm -hmm. and all that. But are you deciding that in that moment you're going to take that Muhammad Ali punch and knock them out? Or are you going to <laughs> pull back and say, you know what, I'm not going to go there, but I, I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to discuss what the issue really is and let's handle it. Let's come to a, yes. a, a conclusion that we both can live with because my goal should be that, that you're okay and I'm okay when we finish this discussion, not the person yes. that's just fighting, being selfish, fighting to just win. I think those are some of the things that help for a help to make a, a successful relationship. And that's taken from our last week's uh, uh, podcast where we we're talking about the stages, the five stages of romance. And that and that second stage is when you with the second stage is when you start realizing that, hey, look, you know, now we have to norm it. We have to get norm. You know, you get you get to say what's important to you. I get to say what, what's important to me. And then we come together and see if we can find it. And this is the stage where you decide, are you going to stay or not going to stay? But if you're married, you should already have been in that stage. When you're married, you should be in the blitz stage now where you both have been through this turmoil and you know who you are. You know who your partner are, you know is, and you know who you are in the relationship. So you should have blend together. So that shouldn't be an issue at this point. But however, because of our microwave society, a lot of times we don't get those individual steps to build upon our successes. So we find ourselves in a mess. And you're right. Loving has to loving has to be there. You have to be able to say, hey, I'm sorry, back up for a minute and give the other person some space and, and love them through the moments, though, especially those difficult moments. And like you say, forgive and love them through the moments. So you got some you got some good ones, Dr. Liz. What's that number two or number three? What's number is that one for you? That was number two for me. Whoa. But but <laughs> these are not in the order that these are not in, in the order. I just pulled these off, but these are got not it, in the order. There is there's it. one there's some that are number one for sure. But go okay. ahead with your number, your next one. My next one's communication. Well, they have it uh, if you poor communication or not willing to communicate or don't want to communicate or not trying to communicate or not true me communicating honestly. You know, if you just a yes sir, a yes man, you know, saying what they want you want to hear, or you don't want to create an issue, so you just yes baby, yes baby, and things say yes baby, yes baby. You know, those are the things that will eventually erode the relationship, and then you'll find yourself in in divorce. Absolutely, absolutely, that that that's good because my my number three was is communication. I mean, not in that order, but these okay. communication, but it's on the top of that list, like you said, mm -hmm. you have to know how to effectively lovingly communicate because this is the thing if you're if you are if you're the way that you're presenting it you know you might have mm -hmm. an issue and you might have a valid point or a valid reason but the way that you you know what do they say you get more bees with honey than you do with vinegar yes yes if you, yes if you're snarling yes. at somebody you know their their defenses are up you're not you know you got to know mm -hmm. when to to pour on the honey right <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and to pick your moments right to pick your moments because Sometimes when a person comes in the door and you just pile your just dump on them, you don't know what they came in from. So you kind of got to give, and then some people will take offense if you say, hold on, I need a minute. They'll take it personal. And oftentimes it's not even personal. It's like, I really don't want to dump on you. So I'm going to go in here and shower and take, dump off the world 
crap, and then let's talk about it. And so it's like we talked about it, like learning the other person's love language and what you know. Yes. And that's to, that to me is where yes. the is where that that uh that commitment to communicate, the commitment to love, the commitment to you know honor the relationship and the boundaries and all of those things. So um, I know I kind of went off into some other areas. No, you, but, no you're, you're correct. But that communication is, is is huge. I think that's like part of the glue. Yes, because, and then plus back in about four or five podcasts ago, we said if the communication was correct, it solves a lot of the problems because the communication is the tool in your toolkit that help you to build, build, and change some of those broken pieces in your relationship and mend it back together. So communication has a major role in any relationship. That's the work and the first work too that you should grab out the toolbox. Exactly, exactly. So it's it's in your court because number three was communication for me too. Okay, then the next one is abuse. Abuse, mm-hmm. violent behavior and vi- abuse to people, be, be, abuse to your family members, abuse to you, abuse to you. You know, when when you have to worry about walking on pins and needles because you're going to worry about you're going to get hit or you can get verbal abuse or or you got that. That's a bad situation for anybody. No one deserves to be hit on or or treated bad or or or, or felt to feel less than any form of fashion, because when a lot of times when you when in a marriage and you guys are joined and a lot of times you're alone, so you're vulnerable. You're very, very vulnerable. You have that person's mercy. And then if you someone that love deep and you come from a a relationship or a family that you kind of keep stuff in in those four walls or in that house and don't let it out, you could take a you could be taking a lot of hits or a lot of stuff before anyone ever finds out. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So that's so that's that is that's something that no one should ever, ever put up with or have to deal with. And stay there. Absolutely. That's a whole, you know, and, and, you know, I did a podcast actually with um, Mr. Miss, Miss, Miss Driver um, a couple of podcasts ago and was talking about, you know, her program and everything. And, you know, when you talk about people that, that actually have went through, uh, you know, or in abusive relationships, there's a lot that, you know, there's a lot to unpack there and a lot to, you know, there's a, just, just a whole plethora of, of emotions and things that you're going through and even mm-hmm. even wanting to exit that relationship. But you know what? I, I think about this. I think about, you know, we talk about the red flags and we talk about ignoring those red flags. And that's another reason why we backtrack and we say, do your work. Do your work mm-hmm. on yourself so you can identify why you not blaming anybody, but but why am I allowing this type of person to continue to be in my life or come into mm-hmm. my life or, you mm-hmm. know, just making sure that you do your work. So you are making decisions, not based off of emotions of loneliness or mm-hmm. emotions of, you know, but that you're making sound decisions that are in your best interest mm-hmm. along with that person. Because I think there's Lisa Nichols talk about uh, giving from your cup versus your saucer. And if you're continuously feeding somebody from your cup and your cup is being depleted and you're not, you know, not selfishness, but it's okay to take care of yourself. So mm-hmm. You have to take care of yourself. And so if you're, if you're taking care of yourself and you're in a whole place, then you start to be able to identify when abusive people are in your mix. Yes, yes, yes. So that's and, a great point. And we're not talking about one-offs, y'all. We're not talking about one-offs because, you know, a lot of times your happenings aren't happening in, in, in any relationship because our relationship requires work. So you know when it, when it doesn't feel right. You know when it's not right. You don't have to guess at it or a wonder or or find out. You know if it's not right, it's not right. But you know you ha- we, you know you all we all have our our our, our downtime or our low moments, and and we need support from the other sp- other spouse or the other partner. So you know realize that that a lot of times when especially when we holler out or we we kind of get that. No, I'm not melancholy, but when you sometimes when you holler out or sometimes when you reach out, a lot of people don't have the mental capacity or the mindset how to reach out to a person or to their partners. Right. So you have to realize who you who you loving, who's loving you and what your partner needs, because frustration 
frustration is a hard thing and pressure is really rough. If you don't know, or if you can't, if you can't release, if you can't come to you, if it can't comfort me or I can't comfort you, we're, we're in an issue. We're an issue. So sometimes, um, not, not violent, not do I be on you, but sometimes when a person can't relate or can't tell you or can't show their true feelings, there may be something under that. And sometimes yeah. you might have to get help outside of your outside of your thing it might be some they might need some psychi some 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 psychiatrist or some pastor or someone to help you all right that's a good point i think it, it also and again we're tying everything back to communication right even communicating with yourself when you have those those ideals or those thoughts like you know you know something is going on you know being able to key in on that and then offer that support because you know a lot of people are walking around with with um, underlying mental issues and we have this Correct. stigmatism that is something wrong with you because you know you go get help or assistance for a mental challenge but if you're if you're facing depression or PTSD or anxiety or any of those things you know you didn't ask for that so hiding it or or or, or stifling it you know just like a pressure cooker it can it can keep boiling up and then it explodes into something negative whereas if you're really in tune to your partner and you see that that it's going down that lane you know, being able to offer some suggestions and there's some ways to do things like maybe some pamphlets somewhere or, you know, the gentle <laughs> conversations or, or the pillow talk or something, but there's ways to get help, you know, without making the person feel bad or less than. So just, you know, the way that we deliver. And, and since you brought it right here, I, I'm going to, I'm going to throw another one in there and this is not my top six. This is, but based on what you just said, it made this thought come to my mind. A, a lot of a lot of times it's because we don't have that time away from each other. We have that time with each other, but a lot of times we don't have that time away from each other. So things build up, build up till we get to be really rough. So you need that time apart. And also with that time apart, you need you need friends of the same sex. You need women. You need to have girlfriends that you do things with. Guys, you need to have guy friends to do things with. Because that, believe it or not, that's a healthy outlet. When you have your girlfriends, you guys can go out and blow off some steam and have some fun and come, in, come back home. You're more, you're more charged. You're more ready to go. It's guys, guys need that male bonding. Go out and do some things and come on back home. Because those are the things that keep you healthy and keep bonding your relationship with your spouse and significant other. So yeah, it's very yeah. important that you do those things because that's very important in our, in, in our life because God designed us to be communal. He joined us to be more than one. We're, we're, we're very community type. We're very, we, need, we need one another. We need that fellowship. We need that camaraderie. Absolutely. I totally agree with you on that. The thing, too, that, that I wanted to um, add into that, choose your associations wisely because yes. your, your associations you know, we don't even think about that, but your associations around you, you know, help help you to um, sometimes to help you to even stay in your own integrity or your own character. Or if you have somebody in your in your mix or that, you know, like you choose your your, your, your friends and, and they're doing, you know, whatever. And then that's against what you believe yes. in or what's in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to maybe you're at your wit's end about something, they could say, you know, hold on a second. You know, have you thought, have you thought about it this way? You know, have you thought about the pressure mm -hmm. that he might be under or, or she might be under? Have you thought about mm -hmm. that? But then you also can have the one to say, you know, he no good. Ain't no, me, all men are bad. And you got that in your ear. All of that makes a difference. So your associations are so, are so important. Yes. And you're absolutely right time apart, you know, because if you're establishing all these healthy boundaries, this healthy relationship, you want time apart because you want to be able to bring something exciting back to the relationship. And what do they say? Absence make the heart grow fonder? Yes, I believe that one. <laughs> yes, all of those things. <laughs> all of those things are so, so important. We don't even think about that. We spend more time, you know, hiring an accountant or or, or having somebody to prepare, prepare our tax or, 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 or whatever we hire, we do we spend more time in doing those things than we do in mm -hmm. just, you know, in, in, in selecting or paying attention to who, you know, who our, who our person is, you know? Yes. Yes. I think yeah. you're next, Dr. Liz, you're, you're next number four. <laughs> Ooh, this is a hard one, but it's money, <laughs> money troubles, <laughs> money troubles or finance. 
Wow, man, that, that that's mine too. For my yeah. got mine called mine is called poor financial uh, management or planning. That's mine. Yes. So it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's poor financial planning. Oh, uh, and that's that's yes, absolutely. Um, not being on the same page. I think this is where like the war of the roses like come in. You know, it's like you know. I, I think if you're on the same page with your finances and you sit down and you say, okay, this is where we are. This is you know, this is where we are. We're gonna have you know. I always subscribe to the philosophy of a joint account so we can handle all of the joint things. But to also have a discretionary account that you that she has and that you that he has, because then you don't have to be under that pressure to say, you know, hey, babe, I, I need to spend twenty dollars. You know, if you don't you don't put that on each other. But, you know, OK, if I'm going to spend a third amount of money out of our joint family account, let's talk about it first. You know, a big purchase or something like that, because then you're on the same page and you really have a partner. Right. A lot of people take yes. it as. I don't want him telling me what to do. I don't want her telling me what to do and whatever. It's not even that. It's about flowing on the evident flowing together so that you're coming to that common goal. I had I, I, I um, interviewed a couple a while back because they've been married for 50 years. Mm -hmm. One thing that they said that I thought was so fantastic that I was like, wow, that's great. They have family meetings. Once a quarter, they sit down and they talk to each other and they ask, is there anything that I could be doing more to fulfill you? Is there anything that's that I'm doing that's like irritating the crap out of you, you know, or, or what are our goals for the year? What are our goals? Like, what is our whole mission statement as a couple together? And so they sit down and they do that and they give each other permission to be honest about it. And it's the way that they communicate with each other. And so they don't go off and they make all these rash decisions without each other. And mm -hmm. I just thought that was just fantastic. If anybody, anybody wants to watch it, it's uh, it's uh, it's in the the love language. It's it's the, the it's the whole series about love and different relationships. But it was fantastic to talk to different relation, different people in different parts of their relationships. Mm -hmm. People are married couples, and just to hear what it takes for a successful marriage, and also not to think that it's a fairy tale, right? Because it's yes. not a fairy tale. Be in be in reality mode that this takes work, but it takes both yes. parties to be committed. To make it work and also I want to add this last thing that I learned from them as well from mm -hmm. the other couples as well is that um, you know when you when you have each other's like you really have each other's back so you teach that person that they can trust you by continuously consistently your actions your behaviors what you're doing so by teaching showing that person that you can that you're trusted with money that, that and I'm saying both ways so it's not just you know mm -hmm. one commander but that you're trusted with money and if you do have a you know issue or whatever have you you're bringing it back and you're working it out together so everything is, is is together but like you said it's important to be able to go apart and know that you can trust that person because their actions consistently have shown you you know and, and, and one other thing, I know I'm, I'm on a rant because this is one of my, ahead, one of my uh, things hey, here. Hey, hey, Dr. Liz, it shows your name. It's Dr. Liz's podcast. But hey, I'm ahead. just, <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a partner and I'm going to throw them, I'm going to throw them on the, on, on the, on the hot seat as he call it today. Um, I just love that. I just love that when I, when I met him, I met him on a platform, on another uh, platform, and I knew his wife before I knew him. I mean, not before I knew him. I knew his wife before I met her. Okay. Because he made it so clear, you know, that he was married, made it so clear, you know, all of the, you know, just, just their relationship. And he, he just spoke so highly of her. So when I met her, it was like I already knew her. And so the, that also helps to build your trust. So you, you're not, you know, you're, you're totally in trust. When, so you're not afraid when that person goes off for a business trip or goes off to do whatever because you've already established that trust. And that person is showing you integrity even when you're not around, you yes. know? And so I just think that is so amazing, you know? Um, I just I think that's amazing to be able to have that kind of relationship where you can rest easy that you're you're good. Not perfect, but that you're good. So I'm going to throw it back to your court because I got I will get on that topic. <laughs> okay. I'm, gl I'm glad you took the time to bring it out and express it the way you did, Dr. Liz, because you made my part of financing a lot easier because a lot of times you got to realize you when you meet somebody marry so like a lot of times you're from different backgrounds or different parts of the world or at least from different nucleus families so a lot of times uh, you don't have the same idea or the same thoughts of what money is or how you use money or what's to what money tools and and that so sometimes it's different in day and night you might be a spender and I might be a saver. 
you might think money is plentiful. And I might think money is scarce. Money, my, and my parents might have told me money don't grow on trees. Your parents might have told you money is leverage. So it's a big difference there. So what you just said, how that couple got sat down, had a family meetings and worked it out. So now that gives you a framework, how you, you and your spouse or your significant other can sit down and figure it out. How can we come to terms with how we're going to manage our money as a group, as a family, as a unity? How are we going to do our money? And this is where you can teach, teach each other or you can see where you're stronger and where the other one's weak at, and you can blend those knowledges together so you can get that behavior right for the union of that family. Because you move a lot faster and move forward with you being on the same sheet of music or being in that same lane. Because if we're on this journey called love or called family, called uh, marriage, and I'm going east and you going west, we're getting nowhere fast. Absolutely. So how do you build that trust? How do you build that work and framework that you can come together as a team and make a difference and you guys can teach each other? Or if you don't know, you guys can make a decision where you go and learn together at. And you gave us a great framework, how you had the family meeting, you sit down and honey, honey, what you want me to start or what you want me to stop doing better. So that works well. Absolutely. Because you you never know. Uh, money, we see money so differently everybody even if you're from the same i was 14 kids in my family it's 14 kids each one of us see money different so when we go out to our spouses stuff like that you know what do we bring so you got to have a common knowledge and that common knowledge is how you work and build together so i appreciate you bringing it out that way and letting us know that there's framework even if you go get together and you're a spender and i'm a saver you know we can work together as a team and, you know, I'm glad that we're 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 talking about this because you know, um, you know, yeah, it's no no secret or anything. I'm transparent. I've been married twice, and this is the thing: if you if you don't have these honest conversations, and I say, when I got married, I I hadn't done my work, so I was carrying along family stuff. You know how what family thought about money. I didn't have the you know the financial literacy education you know come from a you know blue collar family you know everybody's working and you get your money you're spending it and but there was something inside of me that you know I used to watch <laughs> I'll date myself Knox Landing and I saw how I think her name was Linda how she sold her house with well, this house and I think her commission check was maybe ten thousand dollars or something like that and I said wait a minute if something clicked in my head I can do this. I don't have to just go to work and, you know, check paycheck to paycheck and then I can do this. And so it just stirred up the entrepreneur spirit in me. Yes. Right. And so I think that that's what we talk about being evenly yoked, because, you know, if you're not on the same sheet of music, like you said, if you're not on that same sheet of music with money, money is one of the top things that tear relationships apart. But you think it also goes back to one, doing all of your work and making sure that you're a whole healed person when you come to that table. Right. And then I think it also um, it also goes to to, well, of course, being like I said, being a whole person, but to your character and to your integrity, because if you're going to come, if you're going to be if you said I'm going to commit to this relationship, like I think mm -hmm. that's part of it. Sometimes we don't fully commit. So we're still holding this part of ourselves to ourselves. And we're saying, OK, here I come to this relationship, but I'm only bringing 60 percent because I'm still holding this back. Or I'm not bringing my full self, but if you're bringing your full self and you're bringing your integrity, you're bringing character, and you say, you know, hey, I'm going to be honest about where I am. Because a lot of times mm -hmm. we're, we're not honest about that. But I'm going to be honest where I am, honest where I want to go, and you're being honest of where you are and where you want to go. Now, does that match? Because people sometimes, when it doesn't match, they either try to force that round peg into that square hole because maybe the package is gray or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they're trying to force it. And then now you have all these other issues going on. <clears throat> but if you can come together and say, you know what, maybe this just isn't a good fit and be OK with it. Not the rejection of you rejecting that person. It's just not a good fit for you, but it's a good fit for somebody else. You mm -hmm. know, and then if you are too opposite, when you talk about your money, one's a spender, one's a saver, you can help each other. We're going to save this amount. We're going to spend this amount, you know. And so now we're working towards the same goals and it feels good. It's, we have peace in our spirit about it. Then we move forward. Other than that, you're going to have all of these issues because relationships still take work. Yes. So, yes. you know, I've learned these things along the way because the, the thing that I said was stop. You don't want to keep getting in the same 
You don't want to keep doing the same thing. Get off that hamster wheel. Work on yourself. Stop looking at the other person's issues and work on yourself. And then mm-hmm. you're ready to come back out and say, hey, okay, here's this new fix me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, money troubles is a big thing. But first being honest yes. with yourself and who you are and being able to effectively communicate who you are to somebody. Correct. So, all righty. Your, is, your, is it my turn or your turn? It's okay, my, my turn. turn. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> okay, don't, it when you don't curb your alcohol or drug use, that, mm. that's that's a biggie. That's a biggie. As a matter of fact, yeah. for me, that that would be a huge red flag for me. That would yeah. be that would definitely cut the lights out. <laughs> Katie by the doors. We're done. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, next year I'm working on a program, a plan because alcohol and alcohol abuse or um, addictions. In, in recovering from abuse. There's a whole coaching program around that. And, and that that's huge because, again, if you haven't identified that you have that issue with, with, with either, you know, alcohol or drugs, it goes right into my next one, which is ignoring your health. But a lot mm-hmm. of times it's psychological or it's mental, right? right. Um, because they're covering up something. They have some deep, mm-hmm. some type of a pain or something they're covering up. So, um, yeah, that's for me too. And, and, and drugs. Not saying that it's a judgment or anything, but it's just not something that I personally want to deal with in a relationship. Right. But um, but I think that's that is a huge that's that's a biggie. But ignoring your health, period. So we're talking about on when you're talking about drugs or alcohol, substance abuse, mm-hmm. we're talking about ignoring your health because if you sometimes you come into a relationship because it's that masquerade dance up front. So you know mm-hmm. you go into the gym and get your little, you know, pecs on and all that. Uh-huh. Then people get comfortable in the relationship. And they stop going to the gym and they stop doing the things that it took to get that person. And what my mom yes. always taught me is that whatever it took to get them, it's going to take 10 times that to keep them. So keep it up. <laughs> Don't let yeah. yourself go down. <laughs> yes. In my mind, that's called the rut. In, in my in my way of thinking, that's one of my things is called getting in that rut, getting into that norm where, hey, it doesn't matter anymore. And that's when you don't do the things that you did to keep them because you figure we're here now. Hey, we together. Hey, ain't, you ain't going nowhere, ain't going nowhere. <laughs> what it is, what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's the rut. So that you're right in that. Right, you're right. right. Now, my, my sixth one is, and this is a biggie for me, <laughs> not wanting to have sex anymore. <laughs> oh, that 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 what was high is so low now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That's that's such a good one. I'm gonna let you because I got some good stuff on that one. I got some real good stuff on that one. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Yes, because if, if you know if I, a lot of people, a lot of people associate love and sex as the same thing for some mm-hmm. reason. You know, normally when you're younger, you feel that that's that's what love is. But when you get older, you realize the intimacy and all that goes with it, that sex is only one part of it. It's not all of it. But the deal is sex has a, such a, hard, a large part that especially when you're committed to one person and that's your that's your that's your true life and that's who you are and that's who you want those type of things from. So if it's if it's a one or two one offs. That's great, you know, every now and then. But if you both are healthy adults and you both are very active and you're in great health and there's no underlying issues, then no, I just don't feel like it. You know, for me, that's 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 a major, major, not red flag, that's a major train wreck. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot to unpack, unpacking that. And I want us to, to do a podcast on intimacy versus sex. Okay. I want us to do a podcast on that. But just okay. in that vein right there, I think because men and women see sex differently, mm-hmm. there's a lot that goes into that. Because for mm-hmm. women, and I, you know, for women, you can start the, you can start the lovemaking process in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Not having, mm-hmm. it. it can be, but I'm saying you can start that in the morning throughout the whole day. Because keeping each other, like, that's where we went back from that last piece that we just talked about. We just talked mm-hmm. about, you know, keeping yourself up, but also mm-hmm. seeing in the relationship. I love, I love 51st Date. This is a quirky movie, right? Because, okay. she, because she lost, she's an accident and she lost her memory to the point that every day her day resets. Mm-hmm. So, so Adam Sandler was in the movie and every day he had to make her fall in love with him. Because the first night that they were together, 
mm-hmm. she beat him up when he woke up the next morning because she forgot about the day before. Yes, I saw that movie. But that's a parable to what I'm talking about here is because it should still, your days and everything shouldn't get so busy that you forget to love tap your person that's significant to you. And I think if you if you take all of the things that we talked about, you know, you're not having the money issues because you are, I mean, money may get short or sparse or whatever, mm-hmm. but if you all are working in it together and you do feel that your partner really have you and you have each other and no matter what comes, mm-hmm. you're going to work through it together. You're not lying. You're not cheating. You're not doing all these other things, mm-hmm. but you are really in it together with that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you keep moving forward, you know, then every day you should look around that corner, can't wait. You know, you sitting there waiting for your partner to get home, right? And and you are yes. you are and you are actually the only competition, the true competition that you have for each other is you're gonna see who can outlove the other. So that's the only mm-hmm. competition that you have. You know, people love to be appreciated, they love to be acknowledged, they love to know mm-hmm. that you're fully my next one was full being fully present or failing to be fully present. But mm-hmm. that you're really there and you've got them. And I think when you do that, you know, you may have some little bumps along the way, but you've already mapped out how you're going to take care of those bumps. Mm-hmm. So once you've handled each other emotionally and, and you know, every, every you know, every day you're, you're doing something, you know, you're touching, you're there, you keep that love and that romance going. You make it adventurous. You do different things. You do, you know, so you look mm-hmm. forward to one another. So if you keep, if your goal is to keep making that person the 51st date mode, if you will, yes. if you're doing that, then, you know, like you said, if there's, if you, you, you set the atmosphere that you want to, you, there won't be mm-hmm. a lack of sex mm-hmm. because your, your mate, like, get away from me, give me a breather, you know, <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need some air, child, you know, but you, but you didn't pour it on mm-hmm. that happy gene, you didn't pour it on the happy, you know, that you just feel good, you know, mm-hmm. so. And I, and I can say that from experience because I watched my mother and my father for 40 years. They played together. They loved on one another. You know, I saw three, three, you know, arguments or fights in, in all the years that mm-hmm. they were married. And for me, that's what I thought love was until I got out here in this real world, cruel world. But they were just, they loved each other. They played together. They laughed together. They just did so much together that, mm-hmm. you know, everybody that, you know, that knew them, we're just like, wow, that's like the epitome of what an amazing, yes. amazing marriage can really be. So I think just, you know, really getting to know that person and knowing that it's not just about you, but you're doing everything that you can to make sure they're good and they're doing everything that they can to make sure you're good. <laughs> and when there's issues, you just you're just you have a safe space to be to be honest and to be vulnerable. And all of that. So I think those are the recipes to keep us from mm-hmm. from increasing the odds of divorce. I think those are the positives, you know. And yes. when the issue arise, don't sweep it under the rug, you know, because nobody wants to feel like they're being made a fool of. Yes, you're correct. I years ago, years ago, I had a pleasure of listening to Dr. Ma, uh, Miles Monroe when he was doing some counseling to a male, uh, uh, to the men and the women of his church. And he was telling about the, the sex that men, and in that he kind of said that men need sex and women just want it, they don't need it. And he was saying, telling guys how they have to do, like you said, early in the morning, you have to love them and all this in the morning. And he did some great teaching. And I think his his stuff is somewhere on YouTube. And it was it was inspirational for me. I learned a lot about what a woman needs to keep, you know, to, to keep her motivated in that direction. And that has helped me out throughout the years. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. all right. Yeah, you can't stop, you can't stop dating and you can't stop romancing one another. And it mm-hmm. can't be just a one way street. It's not just all about, you know, and I know women don't shoot at me, but it's not all about just him giving to you, right? It's not just about just that. It's about loving on him as well, you know, but, you know, and, and, and the big thing, men love, men, men require respect, you know, it yes. should be a mutual, it should be mutually, you know, mutual respect, but men require, just like they talk about sex, so when you understand that, I think it's like having a, having a, a playbook, right, mm-hmm. if you have the playbook, you know what plays and everything, you, you're good, yes. like, think about, yes. think about having yes. the, the playbook to the other team, right, yes. <laughs> when you study yes. men and you study them, you know, people say, oh, that's a lot of work, well, no, it's a whole lot of work if you get into the bold, bad relationship. That's where a lot of work comes in at. So I just think that, you know, um, I just think being fully present, I think, and that's what we're talking about in all of it. That was my number six, being fully present. Because when you're okay. fully present, then it's not just, again, just about you, but it's also about that other person. And when you keep them happy, I'm, you know, they say happy wife, happy life. 
I say yes. both. I say both. I say when when both are, if you keep them so, you know, so satisfied, and, and I'm going to say this because we're on an adult forum, but keep them um, sexually depleted, ladies, then he's not going to want to go nowhere else because he's going to be too tired. <laughs> so that's the answer. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to start really serious. I don't want you to go beyond that. If you go beyond it, we might have issues. So let me start reeling this in. A lot okay. of times, a lot of times we've covered top uh, to uh, the top six, and the top six are very important. But a lot of times, when you, the things that you do are the habits that you're doing that you're not aware that you're doing that can get you head you for divorce. There are certain things that you don't realize that you're doing. Like, like I said earlier, when you're not participating in the chores around the house or the chores of the relationship, those are the type of things that will get you there. And also now with the tech, we have so much tech at our fingertips. When you, and I think they call it now um, text disturbances, where you call it, I think they call it, uh, what do they call it now? It's a special name. I think they call that cyber cheating or something they call it now. Yeah, that if yeah. you, that if, if micro cheating, that's what they call it now. That if you always have your phone or one of your electronic pieces and you all into that instead of into your other uh, spouse or whatever, they call that micro cheating. So things like that wow. now are coming up that we're not even aware of that's out there now. So you want to watch those type of things and nitpicking. You know, if you always so negative, so negative with your spouse, significant other, that's that's a big turn off. Because now I think a lot of um, a lot of the social media tell you now, stay away from negative, just run from the negative. And if you're the negative and you're my household, I'm going to have to run from you. You're so, going to be on the corner of the chimney. <laughs> yeah, so those are the things that, that you need. And you always have to be a team player. You've always got to be a team player. Because if I if I married you and you're not a team player, it's obvious I got a bad match. So something has to change. Absolutely. So those are the things that I'm talking about. A lot of things. You now, and I'll and I'll I'll end on this last piece. Sometimes the things that you see that you might think are the reasons why you're getting divorced or why you should seek divorce are not the real problems. They aren't the root problems. They're symptoms of the root problems. For instance, I think, I think my problem was I might have married too young. And because I, I got married from like in high school. And I, I might have married too young. And over the course of that time, some things came out that the reason why me and my wife eventually divorced, but I think some of those things were things that were programmed to happen because I was so young and I wasn't mature. So some of these big six that we mentioned came out of my, uh, in my uh, immaturity that I did because I didn't I, I'm not gonna say I didn't know any better because I was grown. I was 18. I was I was a man. I thought I was. Right. <laughs> I was say. Uh, Look, so a lot of times it's not one thing. A lot of times the things you see are symptoms. There's another root cause. So you got to do your homework and look at what is the root cause. On that, Doctor Liz, I'm out. I'm done. Wow, I'm done. this has been a great podcast. I've enjoyed the conversation. You know, just pulling out some things and. You know, um, we're getting great feedback, you know, that the conversations are really penetrating because we don't get this comp type of open communication and conversation about relationships. And a lot of us are, you know, really wondering about certain things. And, and you know, and then we're, we're operating out of, um, I, I don't want to say, yeah, I guess it is. It's operating out of ignorance because we just don't know. We just don't know any better. So had a great, great, great conversation with you today. I thank you for all that you bring to this platform. So with that being said, you all, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this information with somebody else and make sure that you leave your comments because we'll pull them out and we'll talk about them. Listen, learn, leverage the information. Bye for now. Y'all stay fearless.